I mainly wanted to cover this because they never talk about sports oh. stuff. And when they do talk about sports stuff, it's always either against trans people or it's racist. And I noticed that even with like the commentaries in America, whenever they, whenever conservative pundits in America talk about sports, and we have a clip of Charlie Kirk that I want to play along with this one, or whenever it comes to sports, it's always racist or transphobia. Oh, which tells me it's like, these people don't care about sports, obviously, but they are aware of like the cultural touchstone it is, right? And because of that, they feel a need to like get into it and, and address these issues. But we're going to watch. So apparently the Canadian women's rugby team, they had BIPOC Lives Matter on their shirts. And David Menzies is deeply, deeply offended by that. And so we're going to watch it. And it's a very short clip. And then we're going to watch Charlie Kirk uh, get mad at a, a different issue, but similar. So, there were many glowing, gushing, and fawning articles published the other day about the Canadian Women's Rugby Sevens team, which is now over in Tokyo, competing at a spectator-free Olympic Games that apparently nobody seems to care about. I will also argue, fuck the Olympics, you know? <laughs> I mean, pro-athlete in terms of these people have worked really hard, and I hope that... Uh, they are treated better, and I hope that the Olympic uh, organizers are way better, like, do a better job than they have been at keeping them safe from COVID and all that fun stuff. I wish them the best. But seriously, fuck the Olympics. <laughs> if anything, we should have uh, one city that is the place where the Olympics take place every four years for summer, and then another city where the Olympics takes place every four years, so that we're not uh, removing people from their homes and displacing them in order for these cities to spend a shit ton of money where there's money laundering and other corrupt ongoings to build buildings that nobody uses once the Olympics are done. And it's a big waste of money, destroys the planet, and displaces people. So maybe uh, we could not have that and just have it in one location. <laughs> if we're going to have it at all. I know Ken loves the sports, but maybe Viano and I are more on the uh, no sports at all side of things. I mean, the no organized sports side of this. <laughs> like, it should all be Calvin Ball. What the hell's Calvin Ball? Uh, from Calvin and Hobbes. It's where they just make up the rules every time that they start playing. <laughs> Have you been watching the Olympics, Ken? Maybe Ken stepped away from the computer, so I'll ask them later when they get back. I know Ken's been having audio issues, too. And Ken's missing the sports We talk. can't hear him. Um, also, Dan mentioned in chat mentioned uh, the Sloan party, so do you want to mention that whole thing? Yeah, the Sloan party thing isn't a party, uh, just so you know. Derek Sloan said that he wants to create a slate of candidates. And the way he described it when he was on Ezra's show was basically he wants to choose candidates from like every party that he ideologically agrees with, since like ideologically in terms of being anti lockdown, anti mask, etc. And then he's going to create a slate of candidates to be like, these are the people I want you to vote for, but it won't be a party. Right? It's very weird. It's weird that he's decided to come out with this. I think he said that it would include both PPC and CPC members, but he hasn't really been uh, clear uh, about what that means or who's in it or any of that. But that's how he described it when he was on Rebel. So, so it's not going to be the same kind of vote splitting thing that would happen, but it is still weird. Yes. Dan Cullen. Yes. Dan just said, so it's just the No More Lockdowns caucus, but bigger, and he gets credit for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then again... Uh, also, Ken, can you... Can we hear you? Oh? Yeah. <laughs> oh? oh? It worked. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just my mic randomly just decides to, to die out, because I can hear you guys fine, and then I just can't talk. But uh, I would say I agree with you largely on the sports. Um, Calvin Ball for life. Yeah. I would say... Yeah. I would say just have all the sports or all the Olympics... Um, 
at Mount Olympus. Nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally well, on least, Mount Olympus. At least the summer Olympics? I don't know if winter Olympics would be good in Greece. Uh, I'm sure, I mean, I don't, I'm not familiar with, like, real life Mount Olympus so much as I am, yeah. like, Greek pantheon Mount Olympus, but I would assume as a mountain it's snowy at the top. Just have one winter event, like, every few months or something? Yeah, yeah, or you, know, you could you can just have, like, a smaller scale snowboard competition and, and all that. I know I have not really been watching the Olympics except when I'm at work, because I don't have cable. <laughs> No, I haven't been watching. True. I'm not a Summer Olympics fan either. I am weirdly a Winter Olympics fan. And the only reason is because it's the weird sport. Like, part of me is like, I don't want to see someone just running. I can run, you know? Well, I mean, this morning when I got to work um, on my work monitor, there was the table tennis. So I was watching that and I was like, oh my God, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. A ta table tennis would be all right. But like I yeah, like the idea fun. of things like the luge, you know, like people diving head or skeleton diving head first out of fucking ice cream. It's like, why? Why are we doing this? I don't know. I find it interesting. Yeah, no, no. I'm I'm with you. Again, why shouldn't there be full page newspaper articles about these Canuck ladies winning the gold medal? Uh, oops. At time of writing, the squad hadn't even played a single rugby game yet. Their chests weren't adorned with glittery medals, but rather with yet. black and white t-shirts proclaiming BIPOC lives matter. Now, at first blush, I misread BIPOC for biopic, and I thought, gee, how curious that these gals are going to bat for the lives of documentary filmmakers. <laughs> Alas, BIPOC actually stands for Black Indigenous People of Color. It would, <laughs> imagine if it really was biopic. <laughs> Documentary <laughs> films matter. <laughs> I just like it's amazing how much they're like bothered by things like this. Why, like, why does the outrage matter? So they're wearing these shirts. Why do you care, David? My the points Menzies gained in my head for rodents rectum have been lost by the bio. <laughs> All righty then, but missing from all like the articles was an too. explanation vis-a-vis -vis what the rules are when it comes to whose lives matter and whose lives do not. I must say, I'm completely confused. You see, Black Lives Matter is the granddaddy phrase. I agree with the sentiment that Black Lives indeed matter, although I loathe the organization Black Lives Matter as it is so jam-packed <laughs> with Marxists <laughs> and racists. Case in point. Marxists. I mean, they're not racist. Some of them are definitely Marxists, and like, that's dope. Why? <laughs> I can understand why Menzies might be upset with that, but I'm, I'm pretty cool with them being Marxist. No problem there. Yeah, that's, that's the coolest part of it. <laughs> but I do notice, like, all the people that he was showing there, I think there was the group photo, but then everything else was all uh, women of color, except for I think there was one white girl at the end there. Or at least white passing. So it's like, why are you showing these particular pictures as opposed to all the others, David? What are you trying to say? Point Usra Kogari, aka Usra Ali. She's one of the organizers of Black Lives Matter Toronto. Usra. And apparently Usra tweeted this mirthful message a while back, quote, please Allah, give me the strength not to cuss kill these men and white folks out here today. Please, 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 end quote. Oh, by the way, <laughs> Toronto Mayor John yeah, so Woke Tory would later give her some sort of civic award for something. <laughs> like, what was wrong with that tweet? <laughs> yeah, they're, no, they're still on that tweet. They, they bring it up every time they talk about Black Lives Matter. They always bring up this tweet. And really, uh, she was responding to people at a protest that were like fascist protesters that were causing her grief. And honestly, th without that context, that tweet was based. With that context, still based. We don't need fascist assholes fucking around at a, a protest. She said wave. <laughs>
I don't even know uh, much about her to say in a context whether uh, she is good or bad. In part, I'm like, you know, it's not necessarily about the leaders of this movement. I think Black Lives Matter is largely a, a grassroots kind of movement that doesn't necessitate leadership. But like, I don't know. The, these tweets are just not as offensive as they like to keep bringing them out. Worst mayor ever. But here's the thing. I am of the firm belief that all lives matter. Every there single is. one. Dr. Martin Luther King thought so too back in the day. And what reasonable person <laughs> would... David Menzies and Dr. Martin Luther King, just best buds, believe all the same thing. I, like, I don't know why it is so hard. Why? Well, I know why it's not hard, but they purposefully obfuscate, obfuscate it because they're bigoted assholes. But, like, of course, All Lives Matter uh, takes away from the fact that they're trying to draw attention to a particular cause, and so making about everyone is racist because it's watering down. Saying Black Lives Matter doesn't mean that other lives don't matter. It just means that right now we're talking about these lives, right? It's just like... I don't know why they just they can't handle it. They can't handle any criticism. They just crack like the fragile husks that they are. The white fragile husk. Would not be on board with such a sentiment, yet stating that all lives matter is supposedly an egregious act of cultural appropriation, or at least an act of t-shirt slogan appropriation. Just ask the folks at Pollock's Home Hardware. Last July, this shop in West End, Toronto, put up a sign that declared, quote, all lives matter, be safe, be kind, end quote. Oh, -ho! Hogtown's woke mob reacted with absolute fury. You'd think the Pollocks were displaying a swastika or something. Indeed, check out some of the comments that were published in a blog T.O. post gasped one triggered social justice warrior, quote, I actually can't believe I saw this. How has this not been addressed? End quote. Fumed another spirit unicorn. God, spirit unicorn. I will say, I, I appreciate, I think I get where the people are coming from who reacted to this sign, but I feel this is more a case of like ignorance or, or not, like, because clearly what this sign is probably referencing is COVID, right? And the COVID aspect of it is more the, uh, you know, stay home, socially distance, we all matter, like, be kind, be safe, all that kind of stuff. I and, really, I doubt it. Like, well, what, what it's just, mean? like, bullshit politeness coming from a racist, like... No, the sign? Yeah. But if it's about the COVID stuff, like, what I wonder is, like, maybe it is bullshit stuff coming. I guess, like, part of it is we're missing a lot of content. Like, if it was directed specifically at the Black Lives Matter stuff, okay. Uh, if it was about COVID, let's see if uh, there was a date on that blog. Yeah, no, there's no date. Home hardware in Toronto. I mean, there's only a, like, month and a half window where BLM stuff wasn't overwhelmingly in the mainstream media when COVID was going on. So this is, like, going to be, like, after the death of George Floyd. So this is a racist thing. <laughs> like, Well, that's why I'm just curious. I'm going to see if I got a date here. I have the article here. Now I just can find a date on the posting. Of course, there's no friggin' date. Oh, July 8th, 2020. So, yeah, it would have been just after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, like... No, that, that changed my thoughts on it. Like, it, it depends on when, like, that's close, right? I think it, it, which is why it's like the slogans is fresh in people's heads. There could be just, like, words in the air. Like, there could be some more benign uh, reason for this. But at the same time, I can understand people's outrage to it as well. Uh, not enough to get like angry like David Menzies is getting angry here in the need to like make this a huge thing. Like people can react to things just like David is reacting. You live near that.
Well, especially, I think they apologized for it and took it down. And then it's like, you know, it's better than them being like, why are you trying to cancel me? Not being addressed, end quote. Fumed another spirit unicorn, quote, this sign is extremely inappropriate toward black community members that are fighting against their people being killed and brutalized or do you only care about your white customers, end quote. Naturally, the sign very quickly came down before a mostly peaceful Antifa community outreach group dropped by to introduce the hardware store to an assortment of Molotov summer cocktails. But that was then what? and this is now because apparently in- Molotov summer cocktails. What do you think he means uh, uh, by that? Yeah, I think he misspoke. He misspoke, buddy. He meant Molotov silly season cocktails. <laughs> but <laughs> that being said, if they were Molotov cocktails, would the store not be burned down at this point? I'm pretty sure that home hardware is still up and still in existence. So what? Did, so is the Molotov summer cocktails them just going up to it, being like? Excuse me, hardware store man. Can you please change your sign? <laughs> Don't you know it's the cucumber times? <laughs> like, I... Sure, David. Sure. In 2021, you can MacGyver the Black Lives Matter slogan. The, the rugby gals are getting applauded for their tinkering. Not condemned. But I wonder why. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder why, David. What is the difference between saying Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, and BIPOC Lives Matter? What is, what is, why are two of these more similar and acceptable and the other not? What could that possibly be, David? I almost feel like I don't have to spell it out here, but if anyone is remaining out there who doesn't get it, maybe because in the Canadian context, especially, although it also exists in the American context, that Black and Indigenous lives in Canada represent a larger population of uh, our prisons, uh, largely due to over-policing and other policies that are racially not good. So yes, stating that BIPOC lives matter is a perfect, like, uh, acceptable shift away from just Black Lives Matter, where all lives matter is not. Not that hard. Not that hard at all. Are they truly being as inclusive as they could be? Does BIPOC include gay lives and trans lives? Does it include Latino lives? But hey, I get it. There's only so much real estate That's on a t-shirt. So maybe the rugby gals should wear shirts stating So yes, all it does. Li like <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it, there's a reason why, like, uh, other groups might not want to. Because I remember, like, even when we were having, uh, while the Black Lives Matter events were happening with indigenous, indigenous uh, stuff uh, locally, uh, there was some group that I was in where people were debating the use of, like, Indigenous Lives Matter. And, like, being like, we're going to come up with our own thing to not take away from their thing. And, like, them communicating with each other which is not my like i wasn't involved in this communications just a witness but it's like let them have that discussion and find ways to to work together similarly with like the lgbtq plus community like they i mean they also are members of the black and indigenous community are in the lgbtq plus community and vice versa and so it's like yes this applies to a whole bunch of people and like there, there doesn't have to be a conflict here. <laughs> Which is why these groups aren't in conflict. David is the one trying to make a conflict where none exists, you know? Yeah. Is David I... being dumb? The well, usual. Yeah. Well, that, and it's like, why? So now David thinks that gay lives matter, even though we just watched a segment where he was a complete homophobe. So. Lives matter. Except one category, that should do it. 
Or how about this? Enough with the virtue signaling. How about just, you know, get out on the pitch and play rugby and try to win a gold medal for our great dominion? And hey, should they finish second or third? Perhaps they can climb up upon the podium, adorned in t-shirts that state, silver and bronze medals matter. Even though, let's face it, folks, nobody really gives a rodent's rectum. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Maybe he realized the first time he did it, he was like, ha ha, that got, that got a good response. My, my, maybe somebody, even uh, the cameraman pointed it out. He's like, I gotta do it twice. The other thing that really annoys me about that conclusion is the notion of a virtue signal. This, this shit frustrates me so much, but it's like, what's the difference between a virtue signal of them wearing a shirt promoting a cause and you releasing a five-minute video where you complain about the fact that they wore a shirt promoting a cause. It's like, how is this any different in terms of being a virtue signal? Which I would say, everyone signals their virtues. I don't know anyone who is just like, I am completely morally neutral and will not defend any moral position. Because <laughs> usually that term was initially, I think, meant to say that people who just virtue signal is to imply that they don't actually believe the things that they're signaling for. Where it's like, I'm pretty sure some of these athletes probably believe in the cause that they were supporting of wearing the shirt. Or I don't know what the fuck David Menzies believes. I'm just pretty sure he's a racist bigot who's been arrested several times. Hello, my rebels. Hello, my rebels. I'm a good boy. I'm a weirdo.